Hello again, and welcome to Marketing with Purpose. My name is Monica Pitts, and I'm your host, owner of May Create Design, and the tech lady who solves communication challenges through technology. Now, Stacy, my official wearer of many hats, was officially solving challenges through technology when she met Robin Peoples on LinkedIn. Stacy's networking online since she can't network in person. I mean, we have to meet people still somehow, right? So when Robin accepted Stacy's connection request, we totally did a happy dance. Actually, we did a happy dance and then we recorded ourselves doing the happy dance so that way we could post it on social media. Because Robin agreed that she would talk to us about her job. Now, Robin is the National Director of Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising for the Wounded Warrior Project. And, you know, we have heard so many questions about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising over the years. Everything from what is it to why would I do it to how do I do it? And so if you're not sure if peer-to-peer -peer is right for you or if you're looking for ways to make it more successful, you will absolutely find answers in this conversation with Robin. She's gonna explain what it is, and if you need a theme for your fundraisers, what role it plays in the fundraising for the Wounded Warrior Project and other nonprofits that she's worked for. She gives um, advice on how to get started as a small organization, and last but absolutely not least, how she works to support her fundraisers. See, they do everything from providing marketing materials to training webinars to make sure that every peer-to-peer -peer counts and they find success in their fundraisers. And well, I, I won't lie, Robin and I did go a little off script at the end and talk about ways to find volunteers online. And hey, you might think that's fun too. So without further ado, let's talk peer-to-peer -peer and let's talk to Robin. You're on a mission and you just need more people to know about it. And whether you're brand new to marketing or a seasoned pro, we are all looking for answers to make marketing decisions with purpose. I'm Monica Pitts, a techie, crafty business owner, mom, and aerial dancer who solves communication challenges through technology. This podcast is all about digging in and going digital. I'll share my marketing know-how and business experience from almost 20 years of misadventures. I'll be your backup dancer so you can stop doubting and get moving towards marketing with purpose. I just have one public service announcement to make before we get to the good stuff today. And you might not like it when I say this, but you know that the secret to a successful year-end giving campaign is to start planning right now. Don't give up and let 2020 get the best of you. The biggest giving month is yet to come. You know that 26% of all the donations placed in 2019 on classy.org happened between Giving Tuesday and December 31st. So don't let those supercharged 31 days go to waste. Download my year-end campaign planning checklist at maycreate.com forward slash checklist. It outlines your monthly must-do activities from September to January with simple, straightforward tasks to guide your planning activities and discussions to get you rolling towards a successful year-end giving campaign. Check it out at maycreate.com forward slash checklist. And with that out of the way, I can't wait to introduce you to my guest. Okay, so thank you so much, Robin, for taking the time to talk with me about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So our community giving campaign integrated peer-to-peer -peer fundraising starting two years ago, and we realize its potential. And so this year, we're trying to lean in and further educate our nonprofits so that way they can get the most out of this year's peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. And so I feel like your expertise is really going to help us achieve that goal. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I thought that we could start with like a PSA about the Wounded Warrior Project. Like, what is it that you guys do for people? Who do you serve? We serve um, warriors and their families that are post 9-11. So anybody that's been injured during those wars, so the Iraq, the Afghanistan, um, all that during that time, the last 18, 19 years, um, we offer an array of programs and services that they do not pay. They are all free. Um, to them, um, and some of them include mental health, some of them are physical health and wellness, trying to get them up and moving. A lot of warriors come back with, um, you know, they're used to PT, they're used to working out, and they, they put on a little bit of weight, so this is helping them to eat better and get physical again. 
our mental health programs, you know, a lot of our warriors coming back with um, PTSD. So helping them work through that, whether it's through, um, you know, group therapy, individual therapy, um, you know, building the relationship back with their family. And, you know, a lot of military homes, the mom or the husband had stayed back, you know, has had their own life for the last two years and kind of when that when a warrior comes back, you know, it does disrupt a little bit of the organization. So we work with the families to help them with that. Um, some of our um, larger um, wounded that maybe would have to go to, um, you know, physical, re like almost like a retirement home, sadly, we have um, um, home health care that we give to them for free to help the caregiver work with them if they're in a wheelchair, if they've lost um, numerous limbs, or if they have some T TMIs, which is um, brain trauma um, injuries, um, to help them with that as well. So um, we do all those services. Um, we, we believe that they, they paid their dues on the battlefield, so all of them are free. Um, and then obviously that's where I come in to, to fundraise to make sure that those guys can get that for free. So your title is National Director of Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising Events. Like that's a pretty big title. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty honored to like hang out with you right now, really. Oh, thank you. Um, so what is your role over there like and how did you get there um i've worked on profit my entire career i started at um one of the largest ymcas in tampa and i, I was i oversaw their child care all of their child care for um, one of the, the counties out there hillsborough county and part of my job just happened to be capital campaigns and campaigns to help fundraise for that which was kind of my passion i already loved managing people but then that was like something new new for me um, I transferred and uh, got a job in Georgia um, with American Cancer Society for the Relay for Life, um, which is probably the number one peer-to-peer -peer out there. I think they yeah. st they actually started, I, I, I want to believe. Um, and so I oversaw like the South Georgia area. And um, I think at one point I had like 16 or so Relay for Lifes at that time and um, really got into fundraising then. So I was looking to move. Um, I got a job at Red Cross. Again, I stick with my nonprofits. Um, I did uh, major gifts um, and events for them. And, you know, uh, it was a year that we had a tremendous amount of hurricanes. And it was very exhausting, I will tell you that. Um, that's, that's a different type of nonprofit work. You know, it's not quite as much as peer-to-peer -peer as it is, like, direct asking. And this job came up, and it I read it, and I was like, this – is the perfect job for me and so when i got the job at wounded warrior project um they had just were in the works of designing a signature event so they had never had a fundraising signature event before like a relay or the alzheimer's walks or march for babies they'd never had one um so i got to jump on board right then and help create what they um created was a carry for it's a 5k um, and it's very, it's a unique 5K. Um, you can carry um, a flag to show patriotism, a weight for the weight and burden of the warriors as they're on the battlefield, and then another person, which embodies our logo, which is a warrior from the bottom going on the top and vice versa. So super unique. It's very patriotic. We started in a couple of cities. Um, and uh, so that's one part of my team. The other part of my team is any type of third party event. So again, the peer to peer. So if you're hosting a golf tournament, if you're hosting a gala, if you're hosting, you know, paint night, um, you know, maybe instead of a baby shower, you want to give, you know, get people to your friends and family to give you money towards a cause. So, um, and those are all over, of course, of the USA. So um, I'm able to travel and I'm able, well, I was able to travel. Uh, and, you know, we would, I would attend and help the host and help, you know, my team would help them put that event on. That is oh. fun. Yep. I love that you like took the 5k and you spun it into something that's like really specifically yours. That is really key. That is so cool. Yeah, um, it, we I mean, it's only our third year. And unfortunately, we couldn't be in person this year. And we have seen zero like loss. People was really we, our retention is super high. I mean, it's it's been we're very, very lucky. I mean, we picked the right thing and it's working. So it's exciting. I'm like, okay, I would definitely pick to carry my smallest child. Definitely. Like not the oldest one. That would be <laughs> I know, it's crazy. I mean, people like do the baby versions in the front, but um our one of our cities is San Diego, which is a super healthy community. 
we had so many men and women caring. They're like friends, full size humans um, for five for five k, which is pretty remarkable. And I mean, I would never. I mean, I can't even carry the weight vest, so I'm I'm a flag carrier. But um, uh, it's pretty crazy how you know. And it's it's super patriotic to watch too. I mean, it's a lot of energy, so it's exciting. Sometimes I think about that, like when I'm carrying my children to bed, I'm like someone had to carry their child for miles and here you are right. carrying them up the stairs and thinking yes it's going to be too big for me to carry but i know that someone once carried their child for miles to get them someplace and so anyway this is just that's really no it's true i had stairs too and i remember they'd fall asleep downstairs like on the couch or like even like on their in their high chair or something and like lugging a three four-year-old you know 25 26 steps upstairs i mean I mean, I was in a lot better shape when they were smaller than I am now, that's for sure. Um, but it's a lot. But you're right, miles, you know, maybe two at a time, like one on their hip and one, you know, on their shoulders or I mean, so yeah, so it is, it is interesting you know, what we're, we're kind of take for granted. So one of the things that we noticed when we did our donor survey at the end of last year's campaign is that, what was it? I wish I remembered the exact percentage, but it was almost half of our donors had never heard of peer to peer. And so, hmm. and, and I noticed that a lot of our nonprofits aren't necessarily using it. And I think that maybe they just maybe they don't know what it is or they don't know the strength of it. So I wonder if you just take a minute and just generally talk about like, what is it in your opinion? And what are the strengths of this activity? Um, it's so interesting because it's not, it's kind of a new, I guess, name um i mean even when i was working for relay for life we didn't use that in our vernacular really until closer to the end of my career there but peer-to-peer -peer basically is a fundraising event whether it's your, you hosting it yourself or a signature event similar to what i mentioned with the 5k and asking your friends and family to support you within that cause and so many times it's it's an um you know like the facebook fundraisings for instance you know i may give to 10, 15 of my friends, I may not even care about the cause, but you know, they're my friend and mm -hmm. I want to support them to get them to that level. And there's been times where people in your network would then become affiliated with that and have some type of it building that affinity of new donors into that particular charity. So it's kind of a two-folded there. Um, the pros of peer-to-peer -peer is not only, you already have one person that's like loves you, um, and it's really just opening up their network of people and giving you an opportunity to like acquire new donors in that space. So, you know, I know, I mean, I've worked at a lot of nonprofits and people buy lists, you know, to try to get that acquisition and you pay tons of money on ads just to kind of bring in new dollars. But the peer to peer actually is like a very grassroots, easy way to get a new donor base to have build up that, that affinity for your organization. I agree. I think that it's really strong and I it's it's not even our lowest converting type of traffic into the website. Like social media is our lowest converting traffic as far as donations go. And so I'm like, gosh, guys, we can do so much more. There's so many people I know that would support you. We just need to find more friends, right? Um right. <laughs> But I mean, it's also a low lift on somebody too. Like if you have a passion for an organization or charity or cause, I don't have to put on at that third party event. And right now with the world, the way it is, it's almost impossible to. So it's just, a, it's a very low lift mm -hmm. um, to then just say, Hey, for my birthday or Hey, during this week, I want to, you know, raise money for this organization. And, you know, as long as you give them a, you know, the impact or whatever the mission is, I mean, you'll, I mean, money comes in much faster that way because our, they, most people usually already like you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're only going to ask your people that like you. So, yeah. So a lot of our people, um, our peer-to-peer -peer campaigners will choose a theme. Like they'll either have, uh, I don't want to call it a raffle, but it's kind of like a raffle when they'll bake cookies for anybody who donates $50 or they'll shave off their beard if they reach $5,000. Um, so one of them was actually like smashing pies in someone's face for every X number That's of awesome. dollars received, which was that one actually went pretty well. I think they got like $600 or something last year, which was pretty yeah. cool. 
Um, so do you encourage your fundraisers to choose a theme or is, do you feel like it's just kind of optional? Well, it's interesting because I think if you're going to live stream something, a theme works really well because you're going to hit a larger market of viewers, people, friends, you share it. I mean, we're also visual, uh, this visual um, people where like, you know, you're probably stopping, click on a picture before you will just read something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything's going very fast. You know, you even videos now, you only like look at the first couple of seconds of a video. But if you're going to do something like a pie um, or kiss a pig, you know, the CEO has to kiss a pig or something like that, that's can be fun and funny and you're going to live stream it. I definitely encourage that. If it's something that you want to do in person, um, that's just with you and your friends, we usually don't recommend that as much as just a straight on ask with a little bit of impact and, you know, mm -hmm. understanding of what the organization does. Um, so when, so do you like encourage people to do these and, and when you do, is it usually like, uh, do, how do I explain this? So do you encourage them to do it online or do you feel like doing it in person or do you just kind of let them pick or talk through the pros and cons of each and every, like ours is obviously online for Como Gibbs, but then I feel like it can be used throughout the rest of the year too. You can do it on Facebook, you can do, you know, a dinner party or whatever you want to do. So do you find that one works better than the other? And what do you encourage people to do? Um, I think whatever people are comfortable with, because I think if you force anybody to do anything that's technical, Based, they, it, they they have high anxiety about that depending on like the demographic and age. So whatever their comfortability is, we usually give them like both options. So you know you can do this in person, and these are how the best practices of doing that. Or you can do it on live, live stream it, zoom it. You know, um, you know, there's all the like Twitch and all those channels that you can live stream a, an activity. Even Facebook does a, the Facebook Live, but um, and just giving them that opportunity. You know, we had found this year with the third party events, we had a lot of older demographic. Well, they're not comfortable using that media. So, you know, creating a more of a themed campaign around that would help them better than like a younger demographic that's already using TikTok and YouTube and all that, where they're very, very comfortable recording themselves. Cool. And then um, tell me a little bit about does like peer to peer how big of a role does it play in like your annual fundraising? How big of a role does it play in like your year end fundraising? Does it make a difference when you do uh, it? You know? So, so different than any other nonprofit that I work for. So I don't know if this will be great information or not, but most nonprofits that I work for, it's been a pretty big portion of the revenue, like 30, 40%. For Winter Warrior Project, it's very low. It's like one, 2%. I think because we've never had that signature event before, Mm -hmm. um, with the success that we had this year, I foresee it probably growing to a larger um, revenue generator than maybe something else. But we do it really well with our direct response, which is almost non-existent with many other nonprofits. So it's very, it's very different than anywhere I've worked before. So we we do it really well with our direct mail. So mm -hmm. trying to encourage those people to do a third party or the signature event to get more of their networks, since they already. Are doing that is kind of the focus that we will be doing in the next couple of years. I mean, I feel like your cause is it's easy to understand. You know, there's some causes that are not or that people don't see or witness or be touched by firsthand. Whereas I like, I feel like it's so that would make that direct mail an easier, you know, you don't have to teach them what the need is. They know it exists. They just need a solution for it. And you are the solution. Yeah. And I yeah, and I think too, I think, you know, if you think about wars in the past, how a lot of our soldiers unfortunately came back without those services that they needed, mm -hmm. you know, there is a generation of people who kind of want to make up for that too, right? You know, I mean, like Vietnam and, and those kind of situations. So, you know, I think it is, you recognize it more. It's okay to talk about PTSD. It's okay to talk about being depressed now, where in the 70s, 80s, it was like super taboo. So I think that, you know, society itself is like kind of leaned in more. So do you guys like go out and recruit for your peer to peer fundraisers or are they just kind of coming into you and asking if they can do it? Um, our third party events, not the signature event, they usually just come in to us. You okay. know, they're like, I want to give back. I want to figure out a way to do that. And so we give them all the options that they have. We will be starting to market out more for those particular bu buckets, but like golf. You know, it's very specific, so not just random. So, you know, golf is one. Our memorials and um, ours is another one. You know, um, people, a lot of people who pass, they want, you know, they'll do something like in lieu of flowers, right? But then they also want to do some type of memorial page. So 
you know, we will in the FY21 start kind of marketing some of that out. We do obviously market the 5K because it's the mm -hmm. signature event. So we kind of recruit naturally, but then also outside. That's awesome because my grandpa just passed away and my, um, my mom came to me. She's like, Monica, we got these monies that they want us to make donations with. And grandma doesn't even know what her options are. And, you know, and, and I'm like, okay, well, I mean, let's talk about the services that they, I mean, like, so I'm familiar right. with the nonprofit world, but for grandma, she's not. And so she needs a place to put those donations and a memorial would be a great yeah. opportunity for someone like her, I feel like. And we, and we get a lot of, you know, people that in other wars. So World War II, Vietnam, Korean War, those memorials are probably, we probably get that more than anywhere else. Cause I mean, and the VA really doesn't offer that. USO doesn't really offer that. So like if you had a parent or a relative that passed in one of those wars, you know, that's a great opportunity to be able to do that. You're giving back to the, you know, newer soldiers, but then you're, you know, you're also able to, you know, honor, honor a family member that way. That's awesome. Um, so how long getting into small technical details here so when you're helping people plan their events or their campaigns how long do you leave that ask open like how long does that campaign run in general um you know I, i've seen i've seen success more with a shorter campaign between like a four to six week mm -hmm. um it it, it kind of grows a self of urgency instead of just an open open door um you know we need it now right the impact is now and then you know, encourage them to do like a four, six week max, like six is kind of probably the max I would suggest. Anything past that, you kind of lose that momentum and people start to like die off. Mm -hmm. And then um, for resources to support them. So um, I did a poll and what was interesting is at first everybody came back and said, we want to know how to ask and we want to know like what to say. And then and then all the rest of the responses were how to support them during the campaign to make sure that they, you know, and before to make sure that they have a successful campaign. Um, so what types of resources do you provide people? I mean, yourself, you're clearly a resource, but <laughs> like, what else do you give people to start? Um, so we do a lot of like best practices, like, you know, depending on, again, totally segmented out best practice for golf, best practices for students, best practices for, you know, college. Um, the memorials. Um, so we'll, we do that. We we um, we use Donor Drive, um, which is a platform for fundraising. It's a peer to peer platform. Mm -hmm. And so there's a resource tab. So we keep a lot of the stuff in the resource tab. Um, we've done webinars where, like, I've spoke, and some of my my the people that work for me will talk about their experience and what works. Um, we do, um, you know, we'll have our comms and marketing team just write like a elevator. Speech, like a one or two minute speech about you know the mission and just real quick like you ran into somebody at Publix or something like that you could tell the story with the you know obviously the call the action of giving mm -hmm. um, and so we usually put that in print so they have that so they can you know if they're about to have a, an event or something they, they're really comfortable with that we do a lot of impact you know where's your dollar going but it's more on like a you know it's not written out it's like pictures people like to see the pictures you know like we're, we're serving 140,000 warriors at 62 warriors a day a year you know whatever that looks like um let's see what else do we do we do a mini zooms right now we used to do them in person but like if you're a host what we call a host um we'll do like we'll invite them to like a you know 30 minute this is what one of our programs are so they understand the program what the impact is so the program teammate is actually talking instead of me or somebody else that they really are living it mm -hmm. and then giving them ideas on how they could build a campaign that would support that particular program or close to it so do you like connect them with a like did you say a recipient or like a person who's managing the program uh, usually it's one of like a, a teammate that is managing the program okay. yeah um, and then along the way we do a lot of like um, you know, just little emails to them, like keeping them motivated, you know, ask five friends today and we'll give them some type of incentives, you know, get somebody to, you know, join the Facebook page because you're going to learn a lot more in that group, you know, by sharing with your peers more than us just telling you what to do when you can ask somebody, you know, it's sometimes that's easier, you know, asking up here than, you know, thinking that they're going to waste my time or email me and wait for me to respond or something. So sometimes that's even better too, just connecting them with like a peer that's doing the same event. That's actually pretty smart. Maybe I should have like our community campaign have a 
Facebook group for all of our peer to peer fundraisers. It's and great. We'll it's all fill out their survey next year when I email it to them. <laughs> yeah, uh, you should text your survey. That's, that's become very that. successful for us. I will do that actually because I'm like, fortunately, they a lot of them filled out the donor survey. So I did get a little bit of information there, but I really wanted to know more about their experience and how we could better support them. And right. Um, yeah, and we were thinking about doing a um, like a webinar for our peer to peer fundraisers this year, giving them best practices and some tips and pointers and resources. So I'm glad to hear. Yeah, I, mean, I think people like a little bit different. So we have them like written out, but then each of us took each of us took like a portion. Like I did just did the intro, uh -huh. um, and you know talk about you know whatever whatever they're interested in hearing. You know, we did we surveyed them too. Like, what are they looking for? You know, more information on mental health? Is it more information on one of our other programs? They want to learn how to recruit people. They want to learn how to retain people. You know, depending on what the high volume is, is usually how we build a webinar around that. That's very cool. I like how you guys staggered it too with your presenters because it helps when people don't just have to listen to the same voice the entire time. Oh, I know, right? It's, and then, and, then, and, and I, I, I'm very long winded. You'll probably have to edit most of this, this conversation, but I, I get so passionate about it and I'll just keep talking and it's like, you have two minutes. It's like, Oh, okay. I need to shut up. Please let me, let me stop. So yeah, I totally understand that. And I'm going to leave it all in here because I want everyone <laughs> okay, to okay. <laughs> since they have the audio option to just right. do it. I, I feel like they can just listen and it'll be awesome Yeah, or fast forward me whatever you want <laughs> yeah put us on like two times double play and we'll be like chipmunks yeah. um well do you have anything else to add those were my questions do you have anything else to add um before i let you um i think for peer-to-peer -peer, one of the things that it just in my experience that i've seen is they really want to be recognized for the work that they're doing um you know i've worked in just about every lane of fundraising my 28 years and the peer-to-peer -peer, it's something to keep in mind is it's more than just writing a major gift check you know if you have money and you can write a ten thousand dollar check and mail it in that's wonderful we appreciate that and we love you but if you're taking your personal time to put on an event or you know email all your friends and family thank all your friends and family you know that that's a lot that's a lot of work with everybody being busy with kids in school and church and work and you know, I think, you know, the recognition piece is huge to be able to recognize, you know, thank them overly. So we kind of, I'm kind of big, uh, a big pusher on the extra thanks. Um, you know, I'll do thank yous from just me. You know, we, our CEO is amazing and he will like a certain, you know, like right now he's like just every month we send him who we want him to personally call or send a thank you to. So, I mean, that goes a long way when you get something from a CEO, right? Yeah. So I think, you know, just the over gratitude is huge. Um, and I, have, I, in my past, I have seen, especially new in my career, not thanking people and how quickly you'll lose them. Yeah. And I have seen it work the positive way where I've given somebody a lot of recognition and they become one of our bigger donors and bigger supporters. So I, it's definitely a factual, factual thing to do. So hearing that, then I feel like if you were like a smaller nonprofit and this was like your first foray into doing peer to peers, um, if you were doing them as part of like your year end giving campaign, it would seem like it might be smarter to go with just a few. Um, so that way you can really watch and learn and support them and thank them and nurture that experience instead right. of get a whole bunch in and then just being totally overwhelmed. Do you have any yeah. suggestions you might give to the small nonprofits who are just kind of like dipping their toes in this idea? Yeah, I mean, and a lot of the times, I mean, I, I, you know, I'll use Relay for an example. They're so volunteer based, right? Those that those those events are hundred percent volunteer ran. Um, that is the success of the Relay for Life because it's all volunteer based. Um, with like a person like you or I just overseeing all, you know, three four hundred volunteers, depending on you know what your area is, and. What I've seen with that is if you get too many people and you don't have enough jobs for them, you will lose people too. So my advice would be to start small, one or two, you know, hard workers and keep adding to the group instead of having everybody sitting around like, well, what do you want me to do? 
Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm small, so I don't have a lot for you to do. Just hold on or I'll email you. And then eventually those people just kind of just dissipate and they disappear. And then when you get bigger, you're like, oh my God, I have no volunteer base to pull from. What do I do now? So I would say start small and then, you know, decide, you know, where are the holes that we need filled and then recruit, um, at, you know, volunteer match on LinkedIn is really great. Uh, that's a great way to bring in volunteers. I don't, know how much it is i know that there is a cost to that but we have seen a especially with the new signature we saw a lot of success with that cool so what does it do then what does volunteer match do um it like coordinates with like community boards uh colleges people that are looking for community service um people are looking for volunteer hours and then let's like puts little mini ads up for you like whatever you're looking for so when we were building the committees for carry forward we you know we're only in a couple cities and then we have a, the national virtual and we would you know for san diego we would it, we were recruiting just volunteers for that particular event and you know at one point we had too many and it was like that's when we were like okay what can we need to like get jobs for these people to do or we're going to lose them and you know you do lose them you will lose them i mean it's a fact so um, so it's like they're linkedin jobs but for volunteers yes that's cool that's really mm -hmm. cool because I did have cool. an organization just ask me, Monica, how do we um, bring in mm -hmm. younger donors to their organization? And I, my initial thought was, well, I feel like you should start with the volunteer because they are more likely to volunteer as young people because they don't have as much money. And then you can develop that relationship and they will be donors for life. Um, but they were like, well, how do we find the volunteers? And that, now I know there is a digital way to do this. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of like, depending on the area, a lot of college boards, like a computer, like website boards have that. So, you know, maybe it's not an internship, but maybe I need like 10 hours to graduate. Like my son needed hours to get for a scholarship that he needed. So he, he volunteered for Wounded Warrior Project. So like they might need hours for a scholarship to graduate, to get into it because their club itself on campus mandates that they have so many service hours. And you can go in there too. And sometimes they'll let you post in there too, just to say, Hey, we're looking for X. Like we, we got, we were trying to de develop some stickers and our artists did not get what we wanted. We wanted these like young, cool stickers. And that's what we did. We, we branched out to the local college and they came out perfect. It was done super fast, efficient, cheaper, and it was just much better. And, you know, we're like, I wrote them a letter, you know, so they can use that for their portfolios, whatever they want later. It doesn't matter. But like it, it you will gain that younger demographic because um, they're looking for something. You know, we have a very, our, our, that generation's very philanthropic, you know, they really want to give back. So. Well, and it, we really, you are giving back to them because as a designer, I had to learn how to fulfill someone's expectations, how to communicate back and forth with them and understand what the project needed to be, how to deliver it to them, how to do it in a timely manner. Like those aren't things that you learn in a design class. You can't learn it when you have like 400 hours that you can spend on doing something. When you have to learn how to do it efficiently, that's when you become a professional at it and, um, and deliver those results that you need to give. And so when you, do hire on these students while you might not be paying them, you are giving them something that is extremely valuable that they can take to an interview and actually get a job because of. So it's- Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, back when I had interns in the, for American Cancer Society, I went up hiring like three or four of those because they did such a great job in the, in one semester that I like, I almost didn't want to lose them. <laughs> so, I mean, you know what I mean? So, you, yeah. you know, depending on the person, you could wind up with a really great employee out of that. And then you're building that affinity. So you're building the affinity for the organization super early. So like what you said, you get a better job or, you know, 50 years from now, when they want to leave a bequest somewhere, they're going to think about like the one thing that made the impact on them at that age. And then that's how that, you know, then it's a big, it's a big yeah. gift back. So big fun idea there, friends, when you go out and you're looking for your volunteers, you can do it through the job boards, through not job boards, but with the university with like the LinkedIn program. And maybe that's an idea that they can use to get like their year end marketing materials created for them. Oh, for sure. They probably need it for a project or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Robin. Um, how can people find more out about the Wounded Warrior Project or contact you if you're willing to have conversations? 
um, woundedwarriorproject.org. Um, please look, uh, look on there, and, and you can you actually go under where it says get involved. All of our peer-to-peer -peer activities are there, so you can kind of uh, feel free to look around and see what you know, what you like and what you don't like. Um, and then, you know, my information's on LinkedIn. I'm Robin Peoples, so if you want to look look me up, I'm happy to connect with anybody and, and give them a chat. But um, it's been great, and I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. I know that people are going to learn a ton from this, and they will definitely benefit with their year-end campaigns. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. So I know as awesome as all of these free resources and group learning can be, that sometimes you need just a little bit more attention and one-on-one -on -one planning help to sit down and figure out just where to start your year-end campaign. I'm offering a limited number of half-price one-on-one consulting sessions. Schedule between September 28th and October 9th and your one-on-one, -on -one, one hour consulting session will be half off. So that's usually $90 and it's marked down to $45. So to sign up for your session, go to consulting.maycreate.com to reserve your spot today. Now, if you are ready to start planning for 2021, join us for the beta session of our nonprofit marketing management fundamentals course as i guide a small group of nonprofits through our signature marketing planning program later this fall now for the beta release all sessions will be presented live with q a sessions afterwards for real feedback i want to know what you need from me and i want to answer your questions live in this beta release so together we'll plan your marketing so you can get back to doing what matters most, growing your mission and making an impact on your community. Join the waitlist now at youmaycreate.com forward slash fundamentals. Once again, that's youmaycreate.com forward slash fundamentals. Together, I know that we can make these last few months of 2020 the best part of this year. And with that, my friends, go forth and market with purpose.